another mystery of very strange galaxies. Galaxies that most people have never heard of before. Mostly because they're extremely rare and also because they were only discovered relatively recently. But before we talk more about this, let's take a look at the picture. Here is literally what these galaxies look like. This one is known as M60 UCD1 and it's approximately 54 million light years away from planet Earth. Here are two more galaxies discovered back in 2015, both resembling very similar unusual spots, extremely bright spots, that don't really look like any other galaxy. And that's because these objects are very unique. And it's because of their uniqueness and their unusual shape that they were actually kind of ignored for many years. Mostly because scientists using regular telescopes just thought these were extremely bright stars. While scientists using, for example, Hubble telescope instead believed these were extremely far away distant galaxies that were just a little bit too diffuse to study. Yet most of these are not far away, they're actually pretty close, and they're definitely not stars. And it looks like the recent study you can find in the description finally solved the mystery of their formation, helping us understand exactly what these are. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss these unusual UCDs or ultra compact dwarf galaxies, find out exactly what makes them so special, and obviously find out how they most likely form. Although I guess first, a bit of a side note. In the last decade, various studies confirmed that in terms of dwarf galaxies, there are so many different types out there. Quite a lot of them actually seem to be somewhat irregular, as in they don't actually have any shape, but there are also quite a few elliptical galaxies, or even tiny spiral galaxies like the one you see right here, NGC 5474. But as we've discussed in one of the recent videos you can find in the description, in the last few years new types of dwarf galaxies have been confirmed, including the ones that we now refer to as UDG, ultra diffuse galaxies. Galaxies that are essentially so spread out that they're barely visible. These are some of the least dense objects out there, but they're still galaxies. And naturally you'd assume that maybe there will be something on the opposite side of this spectrum. The star density spectrum. And it was just over a decade ago when some of the first super dense galaxies were finally confirmed by various advanced telescopes. And this right here was probably one of the most well known ones at a distance of just 54 million light years away from us. And what you're essentially looking at here, I guess can be visualized by looking at a typical globular cluster. In essence this is an extremely dense environment, spherical in shape, with stars somehow surviving in an extremely small amount of space. In terms of the actual size, the radius of this galaxy is approximately 80 light years. Just to give you a comparison, the Milky Way galaxy is over 50,000 light years in radius. So here we're talking about something that's basically at least a thousand times smaller. Yet it seems to contain a huge amount of stars inside. In this case over 200 million, possibly even more. Making these types of galaxies literally the densest galaxies in the entire universe. And with so many more discovered in the last few years, in various nearby galactic clusters such as Virgo, Fornax and of course the famous Coma Cluster, it became pretty clear that this is actually something extremely common. Now we don't have any in our vicinity near the Milky Way galaxy, but there are some in the vicinity of M87 galaxy, the galaxy that became famous for the picture of the central black hole. And though at first some scientists thought that maybe these are just extremely large globular clusters, turns out that in terms of dynamical and structural properties they're extremely different from clusters and are definitely galaxies and nothing else. And once the scientists realized these are actual objects that are different from everything else, someone was able to discover the most extreme example of everything here, M85 HCC1, the densest galaxy ever known to us. Once again containing hundreds of millions of solar masses in terms of stars, all within a relatively small radius of just over 50 light years. And more intriguingly, by observing the center of this object, Researchers discovered very powerful X-rays emanating from within, basically suggesting that there is also a very powerful supermassive black hole, potentially at least 20 million solar masses in mass, or representing about 20% of the total mass of the entire galaxy. With the natural question being, ok so what exactly is happening here, how can these objects become so extreme and so extremely dense, and I guess more importantly, how are the stars even able to survive here for such a long time? When the ages of these objects were calculated, all of them turned out to be pretty old, billions of years old, with some of them potentially being as old as the universe itself, almost 14 billion years old. 
In terms of the actual density of stars, it seems to be at least several thousand times higher than our local neighborhood, basically where the solar system is. In other words, if we were to try to imagine the night skies in some of the star systems nearby, or better even, extremely close to the center, where the black hole is, here is roughly what all of this would look like. Basically, the densest night skies imaginable. The entire night skies here would be filled with various stars, with some stars only being thousands of astronomical units away from each other, to some extent even forming huge multiple star systems with hundreds or thousands of stars, all technically part of the same system. Now obviously it's kind of impossible to imagine how all of this stays stable for so long, but somehow it seems to be possible, these stars here are definitely not colliding with anything, and this whole structure easily survived for billions of years. Although because of all of these gravitational interactions and all of these gravitational disturbances, it's extremely unlikely to have any planets. So yeah, basically it's just all stars. Now there might be planets, obviously, but if they do exist, they probably formed through some mechanism we don't understand. Either way, within just one light year, we'd probably discover at least a hundred stars, all sort of moving around everywhere, and very likely changing one another in a lot of different ways. And so because of all of these mysterious discoveries, a lot of scientists were super curious to find out what happens inside these galaxies, or I guess more importantly, how exactly did they form. And there were three main propositions. All three kind of made sense. The first one was that maybe they just formed along with other galaxies during the early stage of the universe when a lot of density waves might have created these extra dense bubbles which suddenly collapsed a lot of matter together, forming these super dense galaxies. And of course if this idea was correct, it would suggest that many of these galaxies would be some of the oldest objects in the universe. But some of these objects were discovered to be only a few billion years old, so it means that they must have been created much later. Other propositions involved globular clusters. Maybe these galaxies are just a result of tens or even hundreds of globular clusters combining and joining together, forming a much much larger object. An object that suddenly becomes a lot more active and acquires a lot of dynamic properties. This proposition by itself was quite intriguing, but there was just no evidence behind it. The third proposition was a little bit less extreme. Maybe these are actually remnants of ancient galaxies, potentially other dwarf galaxies, that through various interactions with their massive partners, eventually lost all of the gas, all of their dark matter, and quite a lot of stars on the outskirts, eventually forming much more compact objects, which would then collapse into individual galaxies. Intriguingly though, this is also a relatively similar explanation for many globular clusters we observe in the Milky Way. And so here it wasn't clear why these don't become global clusters and actually remain as individual galaxies with much higher density. And so several researchers decided to investigate this and wanted to actually physically find evidence by looking at some of the larger galactic clusters out there. And they essentially focused on the Virgo cluster famous for the M87 galaxy. And through very extensive observations, they were able to discover over 100 dwarf galaxies in various stages of transition as they seem to be all changing into these very compact galaxies. With this visual example being probably the best. Here we have the galaxy sometimes referred to as the Hamburger Galaxy, but if you look to the top left, there's actually something else going on here. Right in this region, the scientists detected the remnants from an ancient galaxy, along with a definitive sign for another UCD being formed. Implying that this is essentially a destroyed galaxy, presenting a very strong case for how all of this forms. But I guess more importantly, they were able to find individual steps of the formation by looking at individual examples. For example, they found actual dwarf galaxies that have not been disturbed yet. They then found dwarf galaxies with a little bit of a tidal disruption from a nearby massive galaxy. They then discovered ultra-diffuse galaxies, galaxies that lost a lot of their stars but were not super compact yet, galaxies that were already quite compact but still had a few stars around them, and lastly, quite a few ultra-compact dwarf galaxies that have now finalized their evolution. And so here we have examples of every stage of the transformation process, directly implying that this is a result of a destruction of a much larger dwarf galaxy. Moreover, by looking at the distribution of these galaxies, here they're visible as yellow or red dots, it becomes apparent that they seem to be mostly connected to a lot of very massive galaxies, such as M87 suggesting that they seem to form as a result of the interaction with the environment near them. In this case, tidal stripping. 
which would also explain why we generally seem to see them in very large, very massive galactic clusters, such as the famous Virgo and Coma clusters. We don't actually have these near our own galaxy, and so they seem to only form in very special environments. But in one of the previous videos about the Milky Way, we've actually discussed somewhat similar observations in regards to globular clusters. So this seems to be some kind of a general phenomenon that actually ends up forming these very dense objects. It just, it's unclear why in some cases, like in the case of the Milky Way galaxy, it only forms globular clusters, these unique objects that exist everywhere in the universe. But for some reason, in these much larger, more dense, and more massive regions, such as the Virgo region, we don't just get globular clusters, but we also get ultra-compact dwarf galaxies. So definitely still some mysteries to solve. But because all of these galaxies also contain a really massive black hole in the center, chances are we're going to be hearing more about them as a lot of different scientists from various fields join in in order to figure out what's happening here, how they're able to exist and survive, and what types of stars or potentially other objects exist inside of them. For the most part, this is still a relatively recent discovery, so there's still so much to learn. And we'll obviously come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries. For now, check out the studies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.